Hey guys, Thomas the Solo Genie here, aka Mustache Tom, here to review the movie Matrix Resurrections. If you end up enjoying this review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. One, I'll head you over to my P uh, Discord, the second to my Patreon, and the third to my PayPal. Any donations are greatly appreciated, and enough can get you uh, a little requested review or full let's play. Uh, but, you know, you can contact me via Discord to talk that over or whatever. Anyways, shilling aside, and we'll be reminded at the end. Let us get into the movie that is Matrix Resurrections. So, to get you caught up on the soul shindig, uh, The Matrix, the original movie, came out way back when, uh, and was super popular, and obviously has uh, left its mark on the world, in cinema in particular, in how certain people would come to either show montages, or respect, or, you know, comedy or, you know, various uh, variations of what The Matrix has, uh, the very first film, had achieved. The second and third film uh, obviously didn't do as well, and uh, I would assume that not a lot of people would probably like them as much. I would probably say there are scenes I enjoy from those movies, but as a whole, I remember there having been quite a few issues here and there, uh, more so than the original movie. And with that being said, I find it a bit odd that so many years later they want to bring back this uh, little trinity and turn it into a fourth, you know, have a fourth and presumably, I, had, uh, I don't know, final installment question mark. Um, so with that out of the way, Let's get into it, and of course, we're here to be as objective as possible, which is why I usually prefer to give a movie a couple of days, uh, and in particular for this, I didn't want to watch any reviews, because uh, in particular, I felt like certain reviewers would probably be caught up in the nostalgia of everything and say it's a good movie because of that, and, you know... Oh, look, it's whoever, blah, blah, blah. It's good because of that. Or it's bad because of, you know, same thing. But, you know, I wanted to come to those conclusions on my own and as well be as objective as possible. So, with that out of the way, let us get into the events of the actual movie as we proceed. So the movie opens up with some hackers, or I guess Matrix co coders, I guess I'll refer to them as, uh, hacking their way into uh, the Matrix. So we see a team then rush in, a police team, rush in and arrest, arrest a young, look, young, young Trinity, uh, which catches us off guard, I suppose is the point of it. We see then our so, sort of main protagonist, at least for this part of the movie, named Bugs. Um, so she's sort of re-seeing this loop, as they keep referring to it as. Um, and they see Trinity's first call, and she ends up getting sort of roped into Trinity's moment uh, as well. Uh, as she flees from the agents, shooting at them Matrix-style, obviously. Uh, she manages to find herself in a key store, where a uh, unique-looking agent uh, pulls her aside. Uh, this uh, unique-looking agent uh, says he sees code and was able to break free from the algorithm that has coded him, and he introduces himself as Morpheus. Now, okay, so we gotta talk about this. Obviously, Morpheus is now portrayed by a different actor, and it's weird because they use the likeness of the original actor in this movie, uh, so I don't know what that's going to lead to, if that's going to lead to any troubles or anything of that nature, but um, nonetheless, uh, here he is an agent, which I find bizarre, 
in terms of how they're reintroducing this character, it definitely feels uh, bizarre is the best word I suppose I can use. Uh, and he gives off the red pill, blue pill illusion gimmick. Uh, or he's given that choice, and he obviously chooses the red one. Uh, and they both run from some incoming agents and jump out a window. Once they do, we cut to Thomas slash Neo. Uh, of course, being reprised by, uh, our lead here, or our new lead as we move forward. Uh, so, this is where the movie gets a little bit even more bizarre. So, Thomas, as I'll refer to him as when he's in the human world, uh, is being told that the Matrix, the Matrix, is these three games that he has developed, and that they're trying to make a new one, as in the one that they are currently in. Uh, and they talk about all the things in a montage of what makes a, you know, a remake work or, you know, and you hear the catchy words that they use and I'll admit that's a little bit fun. It's a bit of a fun moment because it is a bit of a jab, I think, on, you know, how pitch meetings work and how you know, even some reviewers catch on to these catchy words and how they'll use them. Um, I always found that very suspicious when that happens with re reviewers as well. I try not, that's why, another reason why I try not to watch too many reviews, because I don't want to use language that, you know, they are using. Uh, that is, like, the thing, you know. Uh, one I just to side tangent... One that was, that I can remember off the top of my head was, uh, actually in, um, Godzilla vs. Kong, um, I remember the phrase that uh, I heard a lot of rev reviewers saying was that the child was the heart of the movie, uh, and in my review, I referred to her as a plot device because I didn't watch any of their reviews, so that's, you know, when I was talking about it objectively, that's what she was to me, because I was looking at it as objectively as possible, and, you know, I still believe that to this day, because that is what she is, um, in all fairness, but I do find it funny that I did see reviewers actually use the phrase, you know, she's the heart of this movie, uh, I, th I think I saw, like, three different reviewers use that phrase, or even more, uh, so... It, it definitely is a thing that I find very suspicious or odd that, that these terminologies get sort of quickly picked up on and, you know, used. Uh, so I thought there was a little bit of fun there, I suppose. Uh, not, I won't give that scene t too much guff. Anyway, uh, so she, he meets up with Trinity, a.k.a. Tiff, and she doesn't recognize her, or him, I should say. And this was in the trailer, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are like, huh, that's weird, why, you know. Uh, first of all, she, in the, the third movie, she died. So there's that to be curious about. That's a bit of a head-scratcher in and of itself. And the fact that she doesn't recognize him, even though she is here. So there are definitely two question marks that we need to be resolved, and... I will say now that the answer to those two things are very, very bad, but we're going to get to them uh, relatively soon-ish. So, in this world, back in the Matrix, as they both are, she has a husband and kids, and, uh, and speaking of, Thomas gets called by his boss, and this weird, bizarre moment happens where they mentioned Warner Brothers as an actual meta dialogue that they use, kind of like uh, Space Jam 2. And I find it so bizarre. It feels very off-putting, more so than the, you know, the little poke at uh, meetings, to actually mention Warner Brothers. That doesn't feel like it fits in the Matrix to be that type of meta, uh, you know. 
it, it definitely feels very bizarre. Uh, anyway. So, uh, after that, he goes, uh, Thomas goes to his therapist. Now, we're going to have to talk about this now, because, and I'll repeat some of these things later, but I want to get this out of the way now. The therapist is played by, uh, Neil Patrick Harris. And he, as far as, I don't remember what they call him in the movie, but I'm going to call him, for the sake of simplicity, the algorithm, because I think that's kind of what they were going for in this. Essentially, he's sort of like the new algorithm for the Matrix, so again, I don't know if that's what they called him in the movie, but that's what I'm going to refer to him as. So, here's the thing about this. And I'm going to go in reverse order because I find that fa uh, I find this very fascinating. So later, at the end of the movie, in fact, uh, he, the, uh, you know, he comes across Trinity, and his dialogue is very womanizing and, like, geared in a way that's, like, aimed at her and yelling at her and uh i'm just gonna say it the dialogue written here and both performance are extremely weak um first i'll say that i don't think he neil patrick harris can do an antagonist very well maybe uh, maybe he needs better material i don't know or he needs to be told what to do better, but this performance in particular was extraordinarily weak. And the dialogue almost feels like it was, like, directed at someone in real life. That's almost what it feels like. And I know that's more of a subjective thing to say what it feels like. Uh, but I definitely want to point that out. Because it definitely felt that way, uh, hearing it. Uh, and in their discussions, they use the term binary a lot. I noticed it because they used it, like, I want to say four or five or even six times in really quick succession within the first few minutes. Uh, of course, binary being, when referring to a computer, zeros and ones. That's how a computer operates. I'm sorry, but... You know, I'm just being objective, that is what that means. In terms of computer technology, anyway. Um, anyway, uh, we get a very brief glimpse at Thomas when he, he's in the mirror. We see pretty interesting uh, reflection difference. Uh, what he looks like in the mirror it looks different from what he actually is currently looking like. Uh, anyway, again, we get that montage I referred to in the game meetings and, uh, the pitch, you know, mocking the pitch and, you know, the gaming terms or the terms you would want to put on a box and stuff like that. Um, so after that, uh, Tiff goes to talk with, uh, Tom and she talks about how she looks like Trinity because she played the game, or, you know, whatever. And, very noticeably, her reflection is someone else, too, and it, it's very brief for both of them. So, when Thomas is alone, Morpheus goes to see him, and this is when shit hits the fan. The police be suddenly begin to chase after Thomas, and we see the, uh, uh, I also refer to him as a psychologist, because that's what he fits in as this world, or the uh, algorithm, as I, as I said I refer to him as, uh, is discussing the fakeness of the world that is the Matrix, or how it blended in with reality and all that, you know, the high-end stuff. Uh... So, Thomas goes to the ledge of the building thinking that he can, you know, jump off, and he's ready to see if he can let go. 
But before he can, Bugs is suddenly there and tells him to come along. So he's just like, oh, okay. So he brings him along and they transport. And oddly, his, uh, you know, catch on when they appear in a train is like, oh, this is fine. Uh, definitely not the acting I would have expected from someone who's, you know, been blue-pilled for that long. Um, so I would say that was a missed opportunity, if anything. Um, they literally pr proceed to tell to show him the nostalgia from the first movie. Again, they show him the original Morpheus as well as the new one. And it has been, at least in the context of the movie, 60 years. Uh, that is a long time. Uh, indeed. Uh, so, Neo does give him the pill of choice. He takes the red pill. But very briefly after that, the agents barge in. And a swarm of attackers go after them and their team. Uh, we cut to him and his the machine device, and now I will refer to him as Neo because now we are out of that world, out of the Matrix world. And he is flown up by these two robot devices. I forget what they're called in the movie, but they have names now. Uh, so, Morpheus gives him another weird talk between, but uh, for reality and fiction as they are in this dojo, and he proceeds to fight Neo, trying to, uh, fight back his memories, as I'll put it. Uh, Neo does eventually blast Morpheus away, and they start talking about how the robots of the Matrix started a purge that is happened at some point in within the history of the Matrix uh, set of movies. Uh, we are introduced to Bugs's new team, including two names that I managed to write down, Lexi and Berg, but I didn't get any of the other names, honestly. Uh, and they didn't know how to get Trinity out yet, even though I because the robots would be, I guess, found out. I don't know. So they arrive at the new location called Io, and there they meet with Niobe. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Niobe was uh, in one of the previous movies in, on Zion. Um, so they talk in private, and she talks about how much has changed. And how Xeon was stuck in this, its own matrix, as she referred to it as, in its own war. Uh, then he proceeds, you know, to meet new other characters like Shepard. I don't know, I just wrote some of these names now and I don't know what their characters are, if I'm being kind of obvious. Uh, so, Morph. Morpheus comes and grabs Neo and uh, gets him out of his little prison cell. Uh, and they help him escape. Uh, once they arrive back in the Matrix, uh, his previous boss, aka Smith, uh, barges in and Bugs is in there with them and a big fight breaks out. As uh, Neo focuses on his boss, who is now a smith, and uh, he gives a speech about, again, bringing back binary uh, as a concept. And he also talks about uh, black and white, and there being Anderson's plural and Smith's plural, uh, light and dark, you know. Big Destiny Manifesto nonsense. Anyway, uh, Neo gets to do some fighting, which is, I guess, cool enough. Um, but the algorithm appears, 
and uses what they refer to as, in the beginning of the movie, bullet time, which is when he slows things down, and he's even able to use it against Neo. So the algorithm is obviously very clearly strong. Uh, and, he, and he starts to go over how feelings are easier to control over facts, which I don't know if I would agree with that um, exactly 100%, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, people can alter facts pretty easily. I mean, people can write, uh, you know, a journal entry on and post it online, and it could be fabricated nonsense, and, you know, that's how you would control facts. And it's that easy. Anyone could do it. Uh, so I'm not sure if this uh, thing of controlling feelings is necessarily true, though I suppose he's presenting it as he believes that it is true. Uh, give me a second here, I lost my notes for a second. Um, oh, there we go. So, uh, anyway. Uh, so, they are forced back. Uh, they retreat, and when they do, they come across, when they return back to the base, they return to this, uh, fountainy, like, calm area, where they meet Sate. Uh, this was a girl from the original Matrix. She is an adult now. Uh, again, just showing how far apart these movies are. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same actress, um, considering... Uh, and, uh, do do uh, Nyobi is on board, uh, with the plans after they're talked about anyways, uh, and their plan is obviously to get Trinity out of the thing. So, Neo talks about the plan with them. Uh, and I did the thing with the notes again. Fuck me. So, uh, ba 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 ba. So, uh, yeah, they talk a while about the plan while doing the plan to save some time uh, in getting Trinity out. And Neo moves in, and Tiff, aka Trinity, is let in, and the whole bit is the algorithm is going to be convinced to let the two of them go. Uh, so, uh, Smith oddly, finds himself in terms of, you know, where he is in the movie. He ends up siding with Neo in this moment, fighting against uh, the algorithm. Uh, in terms of where we last left Agent Smith, I suppose Neo did technically free him, so I guess that kind of tracks, I think. Um, even though the algorithm has another major issue that I'll get to when I talk about the end of the movie. So, uh, Neo and Trinity drive off on the motorcycle and they're swarming off many bots that are just being activated all throughout the area that they're driving through. Uh, they eventually end up on a roof after they break away from all that. Uh, they kiss uh, and when they jump off the roof when the helicopters are attacking him, them, Trinity saves Neo by her flying. Uh, then the two of them go to the algorithm together, and they blatantly tell him that they want to thank him for bringing them back to life. 
which is another issue, a huge issue with the movie. The algorithm's plan makes no fucking sense in this movie. It, the writing for this is absolutely absurd. So get this, and it was the algorithm that brought back Trinity and Neo, and a According to the algorithm, it brought them back because apparently it needed them to make the Matrix more interesting or something along those lines. Even though the Matrix, pro or you know, it came before Neo and Trinity, it was there before them, and it will likely be there after them. Uh, if the movie it ends, you know, with the implication that it does. So I find its lack of ability to come up with a cohesive plan to be utterly ridiculous on top of the whole ending, but I talked to you earlier about how it starts to womanize Trinity for some bizarre reason. It, very, it doesn't feel, again, another part that makes it feel like it's not from the Matrix. It feels like, again, someone's personal attack on someone else that doesn't fit the Matrix. So they do fly off together after confronting him. Uh, and again, I just... Just to re-emphasize, like... The algorithm... I don't... I don't understand it. Like, this breaks so much of the movie because it is the main antagonist, since it technically isn't Smith that isn't... You know, he's one of the antagonists. Um... And there's an easy way they could have fixed this, quite frankly. Again, uh, for those in the writing, uh, you know, thing, uh, you could have had one of the good robots that were on their side now, since they emphasize that in this movie, uh, save and resurrect, as the title implies, Neo and Trinity, and the only way they could keep them, uh, safe you know, was to hide them uh, back in the Matrix or something. Like, yeah, it's not... I wouldn't say that plan is perfect. Obviously, that would make a flawed character out of one of the robots. But it makes a lot more sense than it being the algorithm that brings them back to save a thing that would have worked without the... You know, without them being there. Again, the Matrix is something that predated the one, or I guess we'll refer to it as the two in the end of the movie, since Trinity unlocks the superpower that he had. Uh, so yeah, um, it definitely, it definitely destroys a lot of this movie. It makes the movie make so much less sense. I mean, look, all the fighting is cool, or cool enough, I guess, but it, it if it doesn't have a good, cohesive reason, if the reason is completely broken, which it is, then this movie is fundamentally broken. It is. I'm sorry to say. It objectively is broken. Kind of like The Last of Us 2, when, uh, when our, uh, Joel died. That scene is fundamentally broken for quite a number of reasons. Uh, this is fundamentally broken in the sense of, again, uh, the antagonist intentions were uh, completely uh, misaligned with everything, and his entire journey, uh, as it were, is completely kind of segued into this random bit of, again, dialogue that just comes across as something that feels out of context. Uh, and there are other elements that just feel odd, again, like how I mentioned how Morpheus is suddenly, or was, an agent at some point. That just feels like some random added thing that they made him into because they couldn't find a way to integrate him better into the story, so they just came up with something off the top of their head without really thinking about it. And with that, I, you know, if 
the only thing that holds this movie together is the action, then I, I don't know. I don't think it's a good movie. I mean, it has good action in it, sure, but I don't think that's what made Matrix so memorable. I mean, sure, it it is something that a lot of people have taken from. That is undeniable. I will never deny that. The Matrix, the original, uh, created something very clearly in it, you know, innovative people. It did that. That is undeniable. However, just because that is a thing that people remembered, you know, maybe more so than the actual story, because, you know, some people are just, they just remember that stuff more. However, the part that I think, when you think about it way down the line, what really holds the Matrix down together was the whole bit about whether or not, you know, the whole technology, the characters, specifically, uh, everything coming together, um, you know, what was real, what was fake, this whole destiny thing. I'm not, a, I'm not even a fan of, you know, the destiny, uh, aspect of it, but the fact that they keep questioning it in this, you know, in these sets of movies definitely lends itself to being a little bit more loose with it. Um, you know, all of these elements together is what makes The Matrix an interesting movie. It's not just the action. That alone, to me, doesn't make what The Matrix is. It's the complete thing. Uh, just taking elements, you know, out of it, just the action, and just slapping it on a new movie, uh, this shows you why that doesn't work. Because a lot of the new elements they try to introduce in this do not work. Again, the main bad guy's plan, his whole thing, it doesn't make any logical sense. There is, it is fundamentally broken. This movie is fundamentally broken. That is awful. Like, I'm sorry, but if I were to give this a score, the highest I can conceivably give this movie is a 2 out of 10, and that is purely from the action spectacle. That is as high as I can possibly go if I'm being as objective as possible, and that's pathetic. And, again, that could have easily been fixed. Again, it might not have made the movie perfect. It, I'm sure there could have still been a lot of other clunky things about, you know, if it was the other robot that brought it back, or brought them back. But it would have made a lot more sense than the main bad guy. The main bad guy to bring them back in a, in a thing that doesn't make any sense. There's... It's illogical. It's purely illogical. Uh, again, all you have to do is think about it long enough, and it doesn't fit into anything. It's broken. Uh, so, yes, I'm giving this movie a 2 out of 10, which is, again, very unfortunate, because I, I know that will probably get people all mad, but again, I'm here to be as objective as possible. I'm here to break down the flaws, and again, I don't want to take away the action elements. Again, that's probably all, the only reason it's even gotten a two for me. But, you know, it is what it is. At the end of the day, I'm not here to, you know, let the nostalgia consume me. I'm here to break it down, break down what doesn't work and what does work about the movie. And with that being said... That's what I'm going to stick to. So, that's my review of Matrix Resurrections. And if you ended up enjoying this full review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. One will over to my uh, Discord. Second to my Patreon. Third to my PayPal. Any donations, once again, are greatly appreciated. You can even request stuff with certain amounts of money. You can talk to me over Discord to make plans about all that cool stuff uh, if you want. Uh, and it also helps support me to continue helping with my dream of making money and not being poor and homeless. Uh, 
So, uh, until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.